Welcome back to another episode and let's say you don't necessarily want to have your players be building bases like this one piece by one. Maybe you want to keep to stick to a specific style and have them build already pre-built buildings. So with this tutorial you will be able to do so. So we have this building right here that we can build up. And then we can fill it with custom windows, custom doors. Obviously, well, I only have these ones, so I'm going to stick with these ones. But of course, you can go ahead and have multiple buildables. So yeah, uh, let's get started. Now, this logic can be applied for multiple things. Let's say, for example, you will have a campfire that's going to consist. You have, will have this actor that will consist of... Well, it's going to consist of more, but you will have two base meshes. So you will have, let's say, like the rocks around it, and then you will have the wood inside of it. So that that thing will consist of two meshes. And I'm going to show you a method how you can combine message meshes together inside of Unreal Engine 4. So uh, I'm going to build myself a house. So I'm going to have one thing like this, one object right here. I'm going to make sure to snap it. And I have 100... And I'm going to build out a house from the static meshes that I use for the other system. Obviously, it does not use, it does not matter what kind of assets I use for this. All that matters is that I simply use the static meshes and place those out in the world. So as you can see, I have built a small house from those assets. And it's looking exactly like I imagined it would look whenever it is getting placed. Now, to build this thing, uh, combine this together, what I strongly suggest is you start with the front, uh, front, front bottom asset because it is going to take the pivot point from from the first asset that you are selecting. So when I will combine this build right here, the pivot point is going to be right here. Now, if I will select this object first, then that means that the pivot point will be right here. And for our building system, it's going to start building below the ground. We don't want to do that. So we want to select this one, and this is going to be our basically pivot point starting position. So then once we have selected the first one, we can go around and select all the other ones in whatever order that you want to do that. So just go around and select all of those static meshes. So now we have done that. And what we can do next is go ahead and right click this build. And we're going to have an option called merge actors. Some of you might be previously using the convert actors to static mesh. That's a bad one because that actually creates if for in this example, we have four, uh, four foundation pieces. It's going to create four material slots for every single one of those. Whenever we use merge actors, it's going to create just one material slot and all, all of those four pieces are going to be using that one slot. Uh, so there's a plus side and there's a downside. So let's go ahead, let's merge that. Let's save this building. Let's call this full, full build save that there we go we have our building so now we can delete these things from the map because we have ourselves a new static mesh so if you bring this into the world it should be above the ground if it's not above the ground that means you selected the wrong first component and your pivot point is off so uh, let's go ahead let's add this to our building system so let's go to our buildings let's open up our buildables database I'm just going to duplicate the last entry and so we're going to rename this to full build let's select a different static mesh so we're using our full build mesh uh, the trace channel for this I'm actually going to use the visibility trace channel and we will need to create an actor for this now real quick let's just see how it looks there we go as you can see it looks like this now if we build this as you can see it built a window uh, because well it cannot it cannot build anything else because we told it to actor is a build window. So it's going to build a build window. So let's go to our buildables folder and let's create ourselves a actor for this building thing. Now, obviously, we can have multiple houses be built inside of the same actor, but it's going to have some downsides because if it's if we want to have the possibility to place windows inside separately and all that stuff, well, then uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be an issue. You Then you probably want to have a specific actor for every single one of our, your houses because then you have more freedom when it comes to uh, modifying some kind of unique aspects of that building. Obviously, you can use the same logic as we did for the walls. You can go ahead on and use the event set mesh, which is getting ran after 
uh, the object is getting spawned and you can obviously change the mesh of that object and it's going to be just fine uh, but I'm personally what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead grab the floor I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to call this build house I'm going to open this up now because this thing right here has all the logic that we need we don't need anything extra we have the materials getting set to transparent ones uh, ignoring the collisions uh, except for the visibility then we have the interaction which allows us to build uh, and finish this building and that's all that we need for this house right here so let's go to the viewport and let's change up a couple of things the first thing is removing all the collision boxes we don't want to snap things next to it so we're going to delete that at least i don't want to if you want obviously go ahead leave those i don't want to do that and uh, what i'm going to do is also change the base static mesh to r full build because that's what we're building over here there we go now obviously you can set up a bunch of collision boxes next to this and have it be uh, for the foundation block the foundation trace channel and allow to snap more foundations next to it if you like to that's totally up to you uh, i'm not gonna do that what i'm gonna do though is i'm gonna show you how to add windows and doors and the same logic will apply for the other foundation for the foundation pieces for the roofing the, the the yeah for all that stuff you can also go ahead and sneak peek at the build foundation to see what collision rules and what locations are getting used for these objects so you have like a sneak peek over here but in the house uh let's make it a little bit more simpler for you guys so it's not too difficult to find the positioning for the collision boxes add yourselves a new static mesh component this is just for now we're gonna delete that in a second but for now add it and go ahead look for let's look for the door mesh for now and let's place it where the door technically is supposed to be placed so as you can see this one is a bit too snappy for me so i'm gonna go ahead and change that to one let's align this properly something like this place it like so and that's going to be good enough so this is the location for my door so what i'm going to do next is unselect this so just click here and it's going to unselect the component make sure you do make sure none of those is selected so you don't mess with the hierarchies then let's go ahead let's add ourselves a box collision let's select our static mesh pack and let's right click on its location and let's copy that so it's going to copy the relative location so relative to this actor then select your box collision and right click the collision and paste that location over and it's instantly going to place the pivot point right there now of course you could use some other things as well but since we are using box collisions uh it's going to give us some issues if we use some other objects for this because as you can see right now it's not exactly where we want it to be we want it to cover this area at least but this is it, it is not so we will have to make sure that we adjust these values so the x probably needs to be at one so it's very thin doesn't block anything else uh, make sure you don't change this this object's location but you can play with the box extents as long as you want so that's exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to bring this out to 130 and the z i'm going to bring out to it's i think 100 is going to be good enough there we go now we can remove the door door and this is where our door will go so if we're going to look into this piece right here it is going to snap the doors to that specific location and this is big enough of a space and it's not going to be too difficult for people to snap the doors to that location now we need to do the same thing with the windows so what i'm going to do is go ahead and add ourselves another static mesh for this mesh we need to use our window we need to use the double one because it has the pivot point in the middle just like our actors do the actor that we are using for the windows and again go ahead adjust its location so mine's going to go roughly to over here so this is going to be a little bit tedious a little bit time consuming to do so but we do need the proper locations and i think this is the easiest way to get them by first placing a static mesh down and then copying its position because here we can see live how it should look in the end nobody said it's going to be quick and easy unfortunately but it is what it is so once we have it placed another box collision select the mesh copy its location paste that for the box collision and again change this one to one in the x and let's change this to 120 yeah seems to be good 120 by 120 
looks good doesn't stick out of anything that's what we want we don't want it to be sticking out too far otherwise it's gonna look odd so then again I'm gonna delete the mesh and I'm gonna rename these so this one was the door and then this one is the window one so now let's go ahead and let's duplicate that let's duplicate the window one with window two bring it out here put this in this location so this is going to be easy to place it over here because it already has all we have to worry about is the x rotation so it should be 600 we have minus uh, we have minus 600 and 400 so i'm going to duplicate this once more and i'm going to bring this over here now with this one i would have to guess it's at zero obviously we're not going to know if we don't place a a mesh over there but yeah I, I just let's just hope it goes where it needs to go so this one probably is going to be minus 200 then looks like the center point could be at 200 then we want to rotate this you don't want to extend or change the extents because you want to rotate it so that the actor itself would rotate as well now this one is probably going to be minus 400 because my numbers are roughly around like hundreds so it should be pretty pretty easy when it comes to that now this one again could be at zero hopefully i'm right if i'm not right well then i'm gonna have to do some quite a bit of adjustments so it's always really good if you have your numbers laid out if you already know what they are supposed to be so this is zero by 600 and the last window is this one right here which is going to be minus 400 so let's hope it works so i have all of those placed in now we gotta set up the co collision rules for those so select your door box collision scroll down until you find the collision section collision preset custom ignore everything except for since this is a door we want to block the door trace channel then go ahead select your window one then hold shift select the last one it's going to select all of them and now you can change the collision rules for all the other ones so again change that to custom ignore everything except for the window trace so we want to block the window trace and now we need to pass along these uh, collision boxes to our functionality so we have the interface call called return boxes so this is the guy that is asking for the collision boxes so we're going to go ahead and provide all of those now the order does not matter at all the only thing that does matter is that you actually provide those and that's it if you have too many since i copied it it copied this node as well so i'm going to right click and remove the array pin so um that's it hit play uh, i think one thing we forgot yeah i forgot to in the buildables database i forgot to change the build actor so make sure you do that so the build actor is now the build house for the building we're using the build house so we can hit play boom we have the building we can finish it off let's look for our windows as you can see we can place the windows inside i think i nailed the locations so that's good and another thing is this one right here so we have our windows uh, some of those might have to be rotated so if you see issues like this like I'm having right here so these are fine this is fine all of these are going the other way or maybe you want these to be the other way then remember which one those are so mine are straight forward and left from the door so I'm gonna go to the build house with your port so it's this one right here so select this box collision uh, it's gonna be a bit of a task there we go and just rotate it 180 degrees like so don't change any extents or any of that stuff for this all you need to change is the rotation because it is to, for the placement it is always going to be using the location rotation and scale of this object and uh, if you mess with those then well the actual built object in the world is going to be quite a bit different so make sure you have those set up correctly so now it should be all good and ready to go so last final test make sure these are working the same way outwards outwards there we go so yeah that's going to be it for today's video if you found this useful you already know what to do already been telling you this for a couple of videos now so yeah see you in the next one